hello. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Liv. How are you? I'm happy, good. Happy opening day. Yeah, happy opening day to you, too. I mean, you're the director, so this is a bigger <laughs> deal for you. Thanks for having us on, Beth. Of course, of course. Thanks for talking to me. Um, I absolutely love the film. So first off, thank you for making it. Um, yeah. How did you both become a part of it? Andrew. I guess I'll start because I became a part of it first. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, so this project was incubated, as I like to say, uh, in Sylvester Stallone's company. And uh, obviously Sly is the OG underdog. And he wanted um, to make a movie about uh, human perseverance that was told from a kid's perspective. And of course, they were trying to find a director who was probably crazy enough to do a lot of the wilderness things that we did in this movie, <laughs> uh, which I needed to find an actor eventually that was crazy enough for that as well. Um, and so I, I interviewed against a bunch of other directors, just classic, boring interview stuff. But uh, my interview culminated with me actually being flown out to northern Maine and hiking the mountain. That was my final interview. It was, it was hiking Mount Katahdin, which is known as the hardest non-technical day hike in America. And it's not easy. It was not easy. <laughs> um, but I made it and I got the job. Uh, and if if I if I can if I recollect Luke, you still haven't hiked it. Um yeah, this um <laughs> look, I'm sorry. I gotta hike it at some point. I gotta get around to it. We'll go next fall. I'll coordinate with your dad. <laughs> we should. That'd actually be really fun. Um Good day. I got into the movie from an audition. I don't have as exciting of a story as Andrew. I got an audition. I saw Sly on the paper, or Sylvie, as I call him. <laughs> I saw that, and I was like, oh, my God, I got to get this. And then I read the script to the audition. It was The script was amazing. Um, I did the audition. I did good. And then I had probably the most interesting part was I had a director session with Andrew, and we talked for, like, a, a really long, way too long. It was way <laughs> too long. Then we were... Like we were supposed to do, we went like 20 minutes over the, the time slot or something, something crazy like that. Um, and then later on, Andrew came down to Atlanta and we hiked a less cool mountain, but it was, it's a, what's it called? Uh, I forget what the, it was called, but we went hiking and we got lost. I think it's called it's <laughs> Just like not. Mount Atlanta, isn't it? That's the name of it? Something. I'm not sure what it was, but, um, Probably. You're probably right. But uh, yeah, so we hiked that and we got lost, which was, it got me, it was perfect for getting in the spirit of the movie. <laughs> I bet, I bet. <laughs> now, this is ultimately uh, based on a book with the same name. Uh, did you both read the book before filming? Did you, Andrew? I know I did. I, I can read. I know that's stunning to you, um, but I can read. And uh, yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, it was like the first thing I did after I read the script is I bought the book at Thrift Books. <laughs> that <laughs> book was all tattered. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I, and I, you know, I think I read it in like an hour. It's only a hundred pages or something. It's yeah, it's really short. Um, I read it over like two weeks or something, but I'm, I'm a very bad reader. I've gotten better. Um but yeah, I read the book. Nice. Uh, so what was it about this story that ultimately sold you on starring in it and then directing it? Uh, I'll, I guess I'll start. Um, obviously, the, the first thing, like I said, the first thing I got was an audition that got sent in. I read the script, which I think was the first big draw to this. Um, although, you know, it was Sylvester Stallone, which is awesome, I think. More than anything else, it was the script because Luke Paradise, who wrote the script, that, oh my God, that first draft of the script was the most like big, huge, like big adventure feeling story. That that script was amazing. Um, it really made me want to get it. And I was like, I gotta work my ass off on this one. Anytime that I get a really good script, 
it just motivates me to do really well. Um, so that was the that was the big draw for me to this. And then after I got the job, I started doing all the research on Don, which just you know made me feel even more ready to get into the movie. And, and you know, he says he worked his ass off, uh, and he really did. Yeah. Luke, Luke, you know, Luke, you're 15 now, right? Yeah. Uh, he he was 12 around the age of the actual when Don disappeared. Luke was basically a month off from the actual age of Don Fendler when we shot the movie. And uh, yeah, and Luke brought a, a an enthusiasm and a, and a kindness to his work ethic, um, and at the same time was incredibly uh, dogged about getting it right. And there were times where he was sitting in a corner listening to Adagio for strings and just going full Daniel Day Lewis. Well, you, know? you would also you played it on the on the last. I, I encourage I encourage the method acting and then the arts and stuff like that, art, arty stuff. You know, for me as a director, um, what appealed to me about the story? A, I don't think we see movies like this anymore. Kind of the live action PG rated kids movies. Uh, they used to make them all the time in the eighties and the nineties, and somehow they've they've uh, gone away. So that was uh, my first entry point. I think the second one was. We live in a very noisy world right now. We have for the last decade. And I wanted to make a movie that just reminded us of kind of the simple things of just going back to the source, which is family and community and the triumph of the human spirit. And that's really what appealed to me about it. And also I thought working with a, with a kid actor was a great directorial challenge. Um, and of course, casting the right one was this first step in that. And so obviously I made the right choice. Are you saying that I was challenging to work with? That's no, what I heard. No. <laughs> <laughs> I cast the right person and thus it was unchallenging because you were great. And I just Thank had you. you do your thing. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrew. You're making me blush. <laughs> um, so Andrew, uh, there were bits of like documentary footage kind of intertwined. Um, first off, where did that footage come from and why did you decide to include it? Um, so the footage was shot in the eighties, I believe <clears throat> of, you know, people that were involved in the actual search and whatnot. And we didn't decide until post-production to include it in the film. And the reason we did that is we asked ourselves as we put the movie together, like why is this special and why should audiences today care about this? Um, and there are moments and beats in the movie that are, that might seem quite unbelievable, you know, they're, they're especially near the climax, like, oh, okay, this is just a Hollywood manufacturing of the, of the story. But actually, all that stuff actually happened. So we found a way to use it and ground it in the film. Um, and chapter headings are kind of in vogue right now in movies. So I was like, let's just use these as chapter headings and help guide the audience along and remind them that this is not only an incredible true story, but it's actually a, a little piece of American history as well. Um, and that's why we used it. And I, I'm very proud of the choice. I think it, it'll be divisive, but I think, you know, good art is divisive, so whatever. I mean, I think it worked. Uh, Thank you. I think it worked too. Yeah. Right. Um, and now it's my understanding that you shot this in the wilderness. Uh, what was that like for the both of you? Luke, you take that first. You want me to take it? All right. Um, for me, I have grown up my whole life, like really admiring, loving nature. Um, I lived in New York uh, for the first, like until I was like eight, I moved out. Um, I lived right across from a park called Inwood Hill Park. It was like a woods that you'd walk through and then it would go down after like a mile of walking, it would go down into a park. And um, I would hike hike but I would walk through that all the time with my grandma um when I was a really little kid from like three to whenever I moved um so you know like the woods have always held a really special place in my heart and being able to do my favorite thing in the world filming a movie in the woods was the most gratifying experience especially with people as amazing as Andrew everyone on that production was just absolutely incredible and it couldn't have been better. You know, he he's right in, in terms of, I have my own answer uh, that I won't be as good, but um, 
you know, Luke was so into the part, we actually created these fake like foot foot shoes for him, like little Hobbit Crocs, you know, that were flesh tones so that he didn't have to actually walk barefoot. But Luke was so method. Luke was like, I don't like these. He's like, I don't feel like I'm the character. So he would take them off. I'm like, Luke, I'm not condoning that our child actor could walk barefoot through the woods. I'm just letting everybody know I did not condone this. <laughs> um, and, and he would, he but he just sort of, you ran through the woods barefoot. And I don't, as far as I know, like you didn't ever hurt yourself. I got a cut on my foot one time. It was really small. That was the one thing. Cut that out of the interview. Cut it out of no, the interview. Right, no, no. Um, so I, again, the, the commitment was, was there. Um, and I also, I never make an actor do anything that I wouldn't do. And so one of the fun things about working with Luke is like, I'm, we're going to go into this marsh and we're going to be up to our necks in water. Are you down for it? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And then we oh, yeah I'm down, down for it. And get this really cool shot. Um, and also like I grew up, so I was born and raised in Madagascar. I grew up a, rain, a kid like in the rainforest that my parents were, were missionaries that worked in villages. So um I related to just a boy barefoot in the woods because that was my childhood, uh, <laughs> but in the rainforest. And then, um, and then I and I think I just developed uh, an affinity for the outdoors and not caring about kind of being in the mud and rolling around in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and so this movie again just seemed like oh it's summer camp, and that really what it was what it was. And one of my favorite days of shooting, you know, the the montage with the battle hymn of the Republic, that was one of probably my favorite day of shooting because that was oh my god yeah. It's just you and I were just like playing around. Let's go get this shot. Let's get in the waterfall. Let's, let's go to the water. Let's do this. Let's lift up this big stick. Exactly. Let's just have fun. And, and the crew's not trying to keep up with us, but that was really yeah, fun. I feel like Dude. because, you know, you, like you just said, you had, you have, you know, you're, you're a, a nature kid. And so was I. I feel like both of us just acted so childlike while we were filming the whole thing. We, we were such little babies. Yeah. And then yeah, the, the crew's yeah. like, come on, you get you can't go in the water, Andrew. And you're like, no. Luke always compares me to a big kid. I'm like, well, that's why I'm still single. So yeah, this all makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um I want to go back to what you said, Andrew, about you wouldn't make him do anything that you didn't want to do. Eating the fish. Was that did you actually eat a fish, Luke? And what was that like? I, I want to start with me eating the fish because it, it makes it funnier when Andrew's going to say his answer. Um, so I ate, I did eat that fish. It was a real fish. Um, I didn't swallow it, um, but it was it was just as disgusting swallowing it or not. Once it's down there, it's fine. Um, so I, well, I hold on. Why didn't you swallow it though? I, I'm I'm going to get to that. Okay. Okay. Um, full build up. I actually probably wouldn't have. So thank you, Andrew. Um, so I'm vegan in real life. Mm. I've been vegan for it's coming up on three years now. So I didn't want to eat it. It just made it so much worse. And um, we did. I, I don't know how many. We didn't. We only did one take of that scene of the fish eating. I think, but it was like a ten minute run. Um, it was just. It was just one big. Uh, scene and um afterward after i ate that disgusting fish i ate like two things of canned pears and i still had fish scales stuck in my gums for like days afterward i think i found i found one fish scale when we were done filming like a month after it was just <laughs> all the way up there okay oh. <laughs> um again a testament to his commitment uh and yes like i, I you know I'm, again i would i bite into the fish like it, it that scene was fun to shoot because i was able to run a 10 minute take because I, I just i'm like just work your way into it you know it, it's a scene that's about isolation um it, you know he's found this vestige of home but it's not really home and he's starting to realize how lonely he is and the fish, this cold, dead fish represents that in a way. And I was able to run it a take for 10 minutes where it was just Luke, again, 12 years old. And he's just sitting there like being. He is doing like the Stanislavski thing. And it was pretty incredible to watch. And as a director, I was just like, this is great. 
like and the crew's like are we gonna cut my and just let him do his thing and eventually he picked up the fish he contemplated it like he was some like beckett play or something and then he bit into it and it was it was astonishing it was seriously like don't let it go to your head kid but it was an astonishing like feat of acting to watch um so yeah but i i you know i forget if i bit into the fish or was there a second fish i mean you know i would have done it I, now mm -hmm. We we're so busy that I don't remember if I did it or not. You but. did. The funny thing is, we after we finished filming that scene, you went back over there and bit the fish after we were done filming it. You were just like, "Hold on, guys, I gotta bite the fish real quick before you we like go to the next shot." It's just sushi in the end. Yeah, but it's gross sushi. You know, and by the way, I didn't. I just so I don't seem maniacal. I didn't tell our child actor that, that he had to. Because even though he's a vegan, that he had to eat the fish. No, I gave I'm you the option. You were a trooper. Like, as long as I don't have to swallow it. And so we had the bucket, we had mouthwash, all that stuff. It just, again, shows his commitment uh, to the craft uh, is pretty incredible. So thank you, Andrew. It's very kind. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, my final question for the both of you is uh, what do you hope people take away when they watch this movie? So Andrew looks like he's thinking. I'm all, I hope that people take away just, you know, obviously this movie has themes of like resilience and the strength of the human spirit, all that stuff. But I think the really interesting and the most amazing part of this movie for me is Don's relationship with his father, which like Andrew mentioned earlier, comes from interviews and, um, and Ryan, the producer, knew Don for years. Um, so I think that part not only is going to like touch people the most, it's also going to, um, it's also something that they don't know about. And what I hope pe people will get away from it is that you can't let anything come between two people in a relationship because, you know, you never know when you're going to, be lost on a mountain they have a very bad relationship they don't talk ever so i think just don't let anything go unsaid between two people and you know tell them that you love them while you still can i don't know if i can add to that but i, I guess I'll, I'll i'll quick add that but my my goal with any taking on any artistic endeavor is to have a big fat why behind it why am i why am i spending three years of my life why am i putting up with luke david bloom uh, for you know months at a time and uh and it, it comes down to the goal for me is when the credits roll at the at the end of this movie that a parent or child will step out of the theater and take out their cell phone and they will call their mother or their son and be like hey i love you that that's the goal so it, it's to bring people together i think that's why i, I made this movie that's a, that's a perfect goal yeah, I think that's that, that's why this movie was turned out so great, in my opinion, is because everyone on the set had the same goal in mind. Very, very like they all wanted it to be something, especially because it's so important for people in Maine. Um, everyone just wanted it to have a big, profound message that everyone loves and all that stuff, all that stuff. Everyone worked together perfectly, and it was it's, it's ultimately, I don't know if you remember this, Luke, because you were usually in the makeup trailer, but we would give a speech to the crew, um, and at the beginning of the day, the safety talk, and then I always kind of get up on my soapbox and just remind the crew that this is a movie about a boy who just wants a hug from his dad, and like, that's why we're- I don't here. remember that at all. That's because you were in the makeup trailer. Or I never heard of one of those speeches. In. I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's the thing about being an actor you don't get to be there for the nitty-gritty so yeah, anyway. man, that sucks whatever <laughs> i was i was hanging out with nick in the trailer anyway <laughs> which by the way he's coming to the movie um tomorrow we're gonna <laughs> he's gonna come with us that's gonna be awesome fun that's amazing yeah amazing awesome well thank you both for chatting with me again i absolutely love the film and i wish you all the best with it Thanks for Thank so much. the first interview I've had with Luke in the Smart Press Tour. So thank you for that. Really? I've oh, wow. Oh, wow. So yeah, it's kind of wild that we haven't. So thank you.
Yeah, thank you a lot. I always love doing interviews with Andrew. It's fun. It was. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, thank, well, thanks a lot. Of course. You have a great yeah, Thanks so much for having us. Yeah.